Well, thanks again for joining us. Uh, you know, uh, for anybody new that's joined us, uh, I'll do a quick intro on AdMix. We, we are really guides for brands into the metaverse. Uh, we own over 100 properties across various different platforms within the metaverse and help brands identify where they want to be. Uh, we help them build. We actually have a team of builders and then activate and extend that, uh, that experience uh, within the metaverse. And, you know, today we're, we're going to talk to James and Lego, which is, uh, you know, James, I really enjoyed our conversation the other day uh, because Lego is such a unique product. And, and, and uh, you know, we'll get into this a little bit later, but, you know, in terms of like how you're really going to be able to recreate that same experience within the metaverse or how uh, when it's such a tactile product. So we'll, we'll like I said, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but um, <laughs> You know, uh, but but at the at the same token, you know, Lego has been dipping their you know their toes into the metaverse a little bit, um, and, and really been an early adopter of it. You know what? You know, talk talk to everybody a little bit about you know how you got into that, what you decided, and how you approached it, and then you know some of the takeaways that uh, you know that that you learned along the way, and uh, and um, you know from that program. Yeah, uh, sure. Um, I mean, I think you know if you look at. Uh, um, Lego's sort of first foray into uh, what is now being called the metaverse, right, is uh, Minecraft, right? Uh, and um, uh, Minecraft is a really interesting example of, uh, you know, a metaverse-like experience that has existed for years. Uh, I had to dig dig into Google and find out that, uh, you know, it, it's, Minecraft has been out since 2011, um, right? And it's got, you know, uh, 140 million active users, right? So as far as an active community, it's massive. <laughs> um, right, and obviously we, we've we've leaned into that uh, to that uh, that IP from a product standpoint, um, and it's an incredibly popular sort of partnership that we've developed with them. Um, and you know, it, it is still, for better or for worse, uh, you know, a two separate, albeit parallel paths from a physical product experience that we develop to a digital product experience uh, that Manjong uh, uh, develops in, within the video game. Um, but, you know, we are very close to that partner and continuing to look at different ways to, uh, you know, maybe closely, more closely link those two, those two product experiences. Um, I think you also look at it from, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, anyone that's looking, uh, to reach new audiences, you, you do look at it from an audience perspective, right? And we have to go where our audiences are, um, right? So we have done two activations with Animal Crossing, um, one for uh, uh, Lego Dots, which was a, a new sort of play experience um, around Pride Month, and the other one was for video, uh, a, a brand new play experience. Um, and like all of these sort of uh, these opportunities, right? I feel like they are the epitome of test and learn, right? You're trying to figure out, uh, you know, you're making your best educated guess based on who's there and um, the data that you have. Um, and, you know, I think we're, we're learning as everyone is as you go. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about it uh, a little bit later because I know we, we've talked about this, right? But you, you can't ignore the fact that we are, as a product, a physical, tangible right. You know, brick um and so you know there's certainly some philosophical uh discussions that we have um uh, about you know what lego looks like in the digital experience uh and then also you know one of the the sort of highlights that i, I really like talking about because i think it really speaks to uh, a potential digitization of our of our play experiences um we launched um a co-building uh ar uh, experience right, yeah, yeah. Um, with Snapchat. Um, and that I think is the closest thing to where I would love to see our brand go, um, where it is, uh, it's, it's, you know, principled on building, um, but connecting people from across the world rather than the physical space. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I thought that was really cool and really interesting. And, you know, and actually that, you know, we kind of touched on a little bit and teased it, but let's talk a little bit more so about you know, that philosophical issue that you're really having from a, a challenge with Lego, because, it, you know, it, you know, as you touched on, let, share with everybody, because it, it's, it's, a, it's a very big challenge with, with your product, but yet at the same time, you still have to think of the future and where consumers are. So it definitely is. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I actually look at, uh, you know, <laughs> the philosophical principle with the metaverse, like across three different uh, uh, issues, right? I think, um, 
you know, uh, is, uh, you know, uh, the phone better than email? Yeah, definitely, right? Is Zoom better than the phone, right? Yes, potentially. Uh, but from a B2B standpoint and a professional standpoint, is the metaverse better than Zoom? Uh, I mean, I think the, the likes of Meta is definitely banking on that it is. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know whether it is. Um, I think we'll, we'll, we'll see, right? I think uh, as a parent of, of three young kids, um, I've definitely got some uh, reservations about the future of the metaverse and the future of, uh, you know, this world of decentralization. I get it. I understand the value of it. Um, but I have, you know, uh, safety concerns. Um, sure. You know, I, I have uh, concerns about what impacts it has on uh, their communication developments, right? As we go sure. into more virtual world. But as a brand person of a physical building product, um, it, you know, uh, it, it is a philosoph philosophical challenge, right? We we sell a product that is uh, predicated on, uh, you know, a value proposition of the products and a selling proposition is that it is pulled away from it pulls kids away from their iPads and from video games. Um, and yes, we have some video game products and yes, we have an active YouTube presence, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, uh, you know, at the same time, as I said, uh, you know, the, the world is not gonna get less digital or at least not from my uh, expectation the metaverse is sort of proof of that, right? So um, we can't ignore it, uh, but at the same time, I think we can't lose, lose sight of the, of the principles of our product, which is a physical building experience. So how can we bridge the two rather than, um, you know, go fully digital, I think is the, is the challenge or the opportunity that uh, right. we have in front of us. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And by the way, uh, you already got kudos on your bookshelf. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Uh, you know, I, we, uh, I, I am obviously all in on the, on an NFT, right. As a, as just simply a collectible, right. Clearly from the background. Of, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and I don't even need an NFT with a utility. I just, cause half of these things that aren't Lego have zero utility. And right. my wife, <laughs> wife informs me of that regularly when I get new things shipped. I had to sneak the box. And, and yes. And I'm sure your kids are very happy of your current employment employer. Uh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, you know, working off of, you know, what you've kind of learned in the first iteration, you know, uh, of really the metaverse and in, in, in really diving in, um, you know, as brands look to enter the metaverse, you know, what guidance could you give them? Like, what is it that, you know, based off your experience, what, you know, as you think about it, not necessarily with your Lego head on, because you've got specific challenges yeah. along those lines, but, you know, some of the takeaways and, and key learnings that you had, um, as you've been playing in the space, no pun intended. Yeah, yeah. This this would be. Oh no, it's fine. We're we're all good with puns. I mean, this this will be a fun one, right? Where um, uh, the the main recommendation that I would give is um, ask people like you, <laughs> right? Um, and and I say that I say that being serious in the sense that uh, yeah. you know, uh, as part of our internal agency, right? We have a, a pretty strong uh, operating model, which is you know, know what we know. Uh, and most importantly, know what we don't know, right? So partner with uh, those external partners that have done this before. Uh, don't go it alone. Uh, and, you know, bring in those partners that really have experience. Um, so that's a bit, a bit of a facetious answer, I think. But from uh, well, I focus appreciate group of one, that. no worries, yeah. focus group of one, uh, you know, like any new channel, um, I think it's got to start with the audience, right? Uh, and is your tar target audience there, um, right? And, and does that make sense for you and, and your objectives? Um, uh, study the competition, right? Check out what other people have done um, and, and how it's worked and how it hasn't worked. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, uh, again, these all sound very obvious, but, you know, be purposeful, right? Actually create right. utility. Um, don't just do it for clout or PR, although, Frankly, there are plenty of examples that have been done uh, and seemingly have worked for clout and PR, but I think we may be beyond that wave now. Um, but just consider, you know, uh, uh, you know, whether it's going to be on the collectible side, the gaming side, or the experiential side. Um, you know, trading some utility, I think, is incredibly important. Yeah, no, no, I I, I agree, and it's um, you know, I think testing and learning right now, as I've, as I've discussed before, is really important um, because we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, we don't know what is going to engage your consumers. And, you know, the question, you know, and you, and you touched upon this and it was, and, and, um, and Meredith touched on it in our, in our previous fireside chat, but, 
you know, in this environment with a Web3 where the audience doesn't yet exist, right? It's still very nascent. Um, you know, how do you feel, and it is a little going off the cuff, but I mean, how do you feel like, you know, if there isn't an audience there, it's okay still to go in and test and learn. And I think that's why you want to go test and learn because the, the audience isn't there yet. And so you want to figure out what's going to resonate with them when they're there. Is that, I mean, do you agree with that or is that, you know? I do. I do. I think it obviously depends on so, so much of what sort of brand you are. Uh, yeah, and sure. What sort of brand, brand you want right. you, yeah. you to be, right? And I think, um, you know, I always go back to, uh, you know, I started up my career in the Web 2 days. Uh, and I vividly remember when uh, Oprah joined Twitter, right? And right, the world was a buzz, this, yeah. right? The world was a buzz when Oprah joined Twitter. And I vividly remember that month or two months after that, having to draft uh, or respond to about 10 different briefs from clients saying that they wanted to be on Twitter. And I think, you know, I, I don't can't remember exactly, but I, I vividly remember the vast majority, if not 80% of them, I said, no, you don't need to be on Twitter <laughs> or no, you shouldn't be on Twitter. Uh, and, you know, there was a litany of reasons why. So I would say the same principles apply, right? I think, uh, you know, if, if your brand is predicated on, uh, innovation and being the first to market in a lot of cases, um, like the Nikes of this world, um, then yeah, I, I think you can, dare I say, get away with uh, not having uh, uh, a perfect execution within the right. metaverse. And I think that that right there is maybe uh, an underlying strategy that I would recommend to everyone is that uh, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, but go in yeah. there trying to be very purpose personal about what you're trying to learn um, and, and go from there, right? I just read this morning about, um, you know, how the, the fashion week uh, went um, from the, the, it was in uh, Vogue. Uh, and it was very yeah. interesting to hear, like, you know, for the most part, they didn't find it that successful. But, uh, you know, if, there's all the reason why fashion brands uh, want to have a, a a position in the metaverse because of, you know, the avatars and all, all those components. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's a challenging space. And if anybody had an opportunity to go in and check it around, I mean, there's definitely, you know, from a consumer ex a user experience, it was definitely, you know, there, there were, there was uh, some issues, right. You know, just yeah. even walking around and so forth. And, um, but, you know, and, and actually that, that answer and your, your response is kind of a great segue in terms of that next question. That's how is it, how are you defining success for Lego? I mean, you talked about, you know, the, the, yeah. the, you know, uh, different continental, you know, co-building experience. Yeah. Um, but now as you look to Web3 and decentralized, you know, moving more out of, you know, kind of the, the Web2 into Web3, how, how are you going to look to define success for, for Lego in this new environment, you know, given the challenges also that you expressed, you know, earlier? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. And something that I would, again, probably deflect to uh, <laughs> a, a partner <laughs> like you guys to, to, to help, help shape that, right? Because yeah. I think we, as you go into these sort of partnerships, right, as a brand looks to go into the metaverse, uh, you hope in most cases they've got an objective business reason of, course. Uh, of, course. Uh, of why, right? And it, it, it's, a, a, you know, a simple uh, brand marketing exercise of creating those KPIs based on that objective. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, like anything new, I think you have to be cautious of things like benchmarks and what good looks like versus what bad looks like. Uh, but I think even more so, it's less about numerical KPIs and more about, um, you know, uh, what did you learn from it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cause it, you know, again, as a, as a, as, as, you know, we advise clients, it's, it's, you want to figure out so that you can iterate, right. So that you can, you know, do it better next time. And so that you can figure it out. And it's not a, you know, as you wouldn't go in and sponsor a sports team for one season and be done right? You want to be able to go in and you've got to, you've got to have a longer term vision and a commitment to what you're doing there. Uh, even if you're just going to go, even if it's going to be a short term for now, because for, let's say your seasonality as a brand, right? Let's yeah. say there's a certain seasonality, it doesn't make sense for you to be there all year round. You, you want to, you want to make sure that that's the first stepping stone of next, you know, your next season and the season after so that you're learning and you've got that strategy ahead of time. And, and it's really important, I think, to lay that out with a long-term vision of what you want to do as opposed to just like, hey, I just need to be there, right? Because it's, I mean, it's shiny and new. Oh, we're going to make this conversation now. Uh, <laughs> so 
you tell me, right, from a, from a never, obviously we haven't done like, I guess, an open metaverse type uh, right. exercise within Lego. I, I would love to understand like beyond like number of people, right. people that sh show up to yeah. your experience. Uh, let's assume it's not an NFT based right. thing where there's, there's more tangible. What are the numerical metrics that you guys are, are measuring? You know, again, and, and, and that's where I get to, you know, look, we, we look at it from an outcome standpoint, like, you know, okay. kind of exactly what you talked about. What are the outcomes? What are the learnings that if they're learnings, that's great. What are the, you know, is it, are you looking to have some sort of an engagement, right? Are you just ha hoping to have, you know, a certain number of your customers show up and, you know, they have like proof of attendance or what they call POAs yeah. um, within the metaverse so that you can, you know, show that this, you know, you had so many people there. Um, and, or is it in an interaction? Is it with a video that you've got? Is it, you know, an NFT, which we very much define as like a tactic to a broader metaverse strategy, not a metaverse strategy. NFTs are great, but they can give consumers access to certain areas within a metaverse experience or a build that, you know, are VIP. Like if you want to, you know, use it from a standpoint of, you know, rewarding, uh, you know, your, your best customers. And, and the way we talk about it is that, you know, you're now inviting consumers into experience your brand in a new and exciting way to surprise and delight them within this experience. So how do you do that? That's going to be different from a live event. That's going to be different from a TV commercial or different from a web experience, you know, a 2D web experience. Yes. So, you know, I think that it's really a consultative creative project and process right now that we go through and help guide that process. Um, you know, we, we're not getting like a, Hey, you know, there, there's not a campaign necessarily that somebody wants to go into the metaverse. So it's like, you have to kind of really go through that creative process and, and define what it is. And, and that's really what we see as being, you know, where you're going to find that success. And, you know, again, is, is, you know, also, I think it's also how you sell it through to senior management, right? Like, uh, Hey, look, these are, as I'm sure you've experienced, right? It's like, <laughs> Hey, this is, I need, you know, I'm going to dedicate this amount of money, but here's what our, ob you know, our objectives are and here's what we're hoping to get from that. And I think that that's something that's really, um, you know, important to understand, you know, what are the corporate objectives and, you know, what are, what are the brand objectives in terms of, yeah. you know, that, that outcome. So, um, you know, that's kind of the way that we really look at, at it. And, um, you know, and success can mean different things for different brands, right? Absolutely. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's really understanding because it, it's, again, there's no cookie cutter to it. It's like, how do you define what's important to you? Right. And what do you want to get out of it? So, um, and, you know, I think also it's really interesting too. you know, James, we talked about the fact that, that, you know, Lego is a multi-generational brand. And I thought it was really interesting when we were speaking that you mentioned that the largest growing audience for you guys is adults. How do you view that, you know, again, how do you view, you know, connecting with adults now in, the, in this Web3, which does tend to be more adult, you know, as opposed to the yeah. Roblox or the Minecrafts or the Fortnites, um, which is interesting, though, because you're seeing a lot of, you know, high-end brands going into Roblox, let's say, you know, but I don't see that as like their audience. So, I mean, it's like a, it's, you're, you're building as a brand, you're going to where the audience is, but it may not be your audience, but there is an audience versus going and building something where there's not an audience. Uh, yeah. yet still defined. So, you know, with that in mind, how, you know, how are you approaching that to reach that adult audience for Lego? Uh, I'm so glad you brought up the Roblox and the, the other brand experiences in there. Cause uh, you know, I'm I, sitting on the sidelines, right. Uh, and seeing those activations. Um, yeah. I, I to, to what you said, I'm scratching my head to think like, why, why would uh, a brand like X, I won't say, uh, yes. go into an, <laughs> go into an audience uh, at, an environment like Roblox, which skews incredibly young, I imagine. I don't know uh, uh, the, yeah. the data behind it, um, and that's why I'm not being uh, overly critical on it. But yeah, right. I, I think listen, it, it's going to come down to a significant uh, audience analysis, right? Uh, and if yeah. I knew, if I knew uh, everything, uh, and by, <laughs> uh, for <laughs> for what it's worth, when I saw the title of this uh, this speaking opportunity, that to, to, be the master for the meta mastering the metaverse. I am not mastering anything to do with the no, metaverse. I am just <laughs> curious, curious <laughs> about it. <laughs> exactly. You're not option. alone in that way. You're not yes. alone along those lines. It's still, you know, it's still so early that, that everybody is still trying to define and understand what what you know what it what it is what it takes to master the metaverse. So yeah. so I could say I, I listen, uh, 
Lego's a big company. Uh, I, I fully believe that uh, there is a, a department or a group of people that are having uh, very action and solution oriented conversations as it relates to what is our position on the metaverse. Um, yeah, if you're, if you're listening, I'd love to join those conversations. Um, <laughs> um, right, but as I said, I think without uh, just me having a, a real overview of uh, the audience analysis, um, uh, I would assume that there has to be a considerable overlap um, with what we at Lego call our uh, sort of our build and display audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, um, right, <laughs> where there's this this collectible dynamic, um, you know, and, and the clear overlap uh, between that and, and NFTs, right? The collectible components within NFTs. Right. Uh, at a basic level, you know, what does an NFT version of uh, our Lego minifigure look like? Um, you know, because there is that collectability that already happens. That seems to be the most obvious one for adults. Um, yeah, and we, have, we have an a massively uh, impactful um, high affinity network uh, uh, fan group um, that uh, you know know more about the product than we do to some cases, and do uh, more amazing things with the product than we do. And we hire them as product designers, and right. uh, you know they have been employees. So I, I think. Uh, I would Which, say by the way, NFT. I think it's great. I, I love that. I love that you guys do that. I mean, it's it's yes. such a natural tie-in, right? It, it is. So, for me to, to answer the question, I think the NFT area is probably the most um, obvious one uh, yeah. from an adult standpoint. Um, but then, if you think about uh, to flip it, if you think about um, you know what's happened in Minecraft from a experience standpoint and how people have gone about building the most obscene virtual environments um, and, and seen in a good way, like just the craziest, most intricate uh, virtual environments. There's gotta be something there. Uh, you know, focus group of one, I don't get it, but, and I clearly get the collectible standpoint. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's a natural time to be able to, to, to be able to tie both the NFT and the experience in, in terms of building um you know you can you can allow for adults to really get in and play with your product within this new environment but at the same yeah. time rewarding them through an nft and these unique experiences and and be able to, to participate in a value exchange right so now no longer yes. am i just collecting or collecting something building but it's now appreciating in value because it's more exclusive or uh, i can it gives me access to more events and so forth yeah. uh and that yeah you know, i that, think there is one thing that I think we as a brand are very cautious of is that exclusivity nature. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't want to be exclusive. Um, right. We want to be inclusive, um, you know, uh, which is obviously a big buzz for for good reason right now. Sure, absolutely. But just just from a, we we predicate ourselves of being giving everyone access to to our product, um, uh, you know, at a number of different price points. So I think there's a there is a little bit of a again a philosophical challenge about sure. uh you know that that nft collectability standpoint um yeah right if it's going to be available to everybody then it you know yes but i still think yeah. there's an interesting this is an interesting opportunity to potentially test out what that exclusivity looks like from a digital standpoint versus a physical standpoint yeah 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 no no, no it's, it's going to be interesting listen it's going to be interesting right this is a brand yeah. brave new world and and uh, you know that this is the the opportunity and the time to really get in there and figure this out because yeah. uh, it's only going to continue to grow and you've got to you've got to get your foothold in there some way uh, and you've got to get in and learn what's going to really engage and what's going to make the most amount of sense for your audience because um, they're going to be there and yes. you want to make sure that you're there when 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 they're uh, when they're there and you know but also but listen and, and, and look I, I think James. It's, you know, there are so many different opportunities within the metaverse and, and I know it's still very nascent and, and you guys have, have just started to experiment and think about it from that perspective. But what do you see as some of the bigger challenges for brands as they consider participating in the metaverse, it, even in your, it, as your survey of one, like, you know, wh where is it that you see um, some of the bigger challenges? I think, um, you know, uh, we talked about it a little bit the other day, but uh, just kind of curious if you could expand on that. Yeah, I mean, I think we sort of talked about it uh, in various various places. I mean, I think uh, yeah. for the most part, the brands that have done it, right, are the brands that are comfortable with failing. 
right, uh, right, right. Comfortable of failing forward, um, you know, and and not getting things perfect. Uh, perfect. Um, I think so. I, I certainly take great inspiration from that. Um, right. It doesn't have to be a ten out of ten. It can be a, a seven out of ten sort of uh, execution. Um, we've talked about. Uh, bringing on the right partners involved and not at, in any case trying to do this by yourself. Um, and I've definitely heard in, instances of that. Um, and I think uh, for the most part as well, uh, and you know, these are marketing principles, right? Is being not just considerate of your audience, but just creating value, right? Build, build some value into it um, so that there is a, a, a reason why you're doing it. Uh, and it isn't just for cloud or just for the PR uh, or just for the clicks. Um, I think, I think that's super interesting, and I and I've seen that in a couple cases, and not as many cases as I thought uh, I, I would see from from uh, brands getting involved. Um, you know, but again, I I am only a focus group of one, and I'm sure you know I not sure I hope that they have uh, you know strategic uh, reason, reasons for why they've done X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I mean, it's listen it, it is as we you know we we talk to brands. Uh, like every week, uh, you know, multiple, uh, you know, we're probably having 10 to 15 meetings a week, you know, talking yeah. about fortune 500 brands and their agencies. And it's, you know, everybody has their different take on it and, and everybody's still learning, you know, that, yeah. you know, they're, they're very much trying to figure out this new space and what's going to make the most amount of sense. And I think to your point though, it depends on what the brand's objectives are, what, what they're comfortable with, because you see, you, there are some brands, for example, that, that do want to be there first, right? They, they, they need to be there first both from just a brand, you know, flag in the yep. ground standpoint. And then also, you know, they want to see that PR value out of it as well. And then there's others that are taking more of a wait and see approach. Like I want to make sure I want to, I want to be there, but I want to be there right and authentic. And I think, yes. you know, one of the, th one of the challenges I think some brands have faced is that they have been authentic. You know, it, authenticity is so important within this space because it's really about a community. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to be authentic to that community, but at the same time, be authentic to your brand. And I yeah. think that's where, you know, as you go through that creative process is what you really need to kind of figure out where that balance is between how do you authentically integrate yourself in with this new community and make sure that you're not tomorrow's meme, but at the same time, you're still true to your brand ethos. And, you know, but you also have to kind of like with user generated content to a certain extent, you have to give up a little bit of. Uh, you know, that, that, uh, that brand control to a certain extent, because each, you know, platform is different and unique in the way that your brand is visualized, right? Yeah. So sandbox is more of a, a Minecrafty type experience. And if, if you're comfortable with your brand being represented that way, right, then that's okay. You know, that, that then, then you're comfortable in that environment, whereas the central land is a little bit more realistic and lifelike, a little bit more gamified, but more realistic. And then there's even like the sum num spaces, which, you know, if anybody hasn't heard of, is a little bit more, uh, much more graphically rich. And, and that's the challenges that a lot of brands will face is like, where is going to be that, that the best entry point for me, not only based on audience, but how my brand is represented. And is that something that I'm comfortable with having my brand represented in that way? Um, which yeah. kind of getting back to your Roblox comment is also very interesting because, you know, it's, you know, in the Roblox environment, it's a very gamified, you know, yes. outside of it being a younger audience, it's very gamified sort of uh, experience from a brand perspective. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. And I think you're hitting, you're hitting on a fun, uh, a fun uh, point here, right? About, uh, you know, just the, the explosion of the creator economy and the value that creators uh, yeah. bring to uh experience, content, whatever it may be, um, you know, at the end of the day, they are uh, better than brands at, at creating content and creating right. experiences because for the most part, right, they're not trying to sell as hard uh, as uh, brands are. And even if they are, it's more built into the dynamic that they created with their community. So right. I'm really right. excited to see where the how the bigger creators within this space, how the bigger influencers with, within uh, you know, the various metaverses start building out, uh, you know, beyond uh, what the board eight, eight, uh, board eight yacht club have yeah, done and, yeah. and, and, and others, uh, you know, I'm excited to see where those, that, those NFT communities that are yeah. fervent um, yes. sort of come, and come to life in, in the metaverse. That to me is an interesting op opportunity. I think one where brand to your point can come and get 
involved with them in a more authentic way than uh, dropping your brand logo and experience into the metaverse. That's just me yeah. maybe being a cynic. Yeah, no, no, it's, no, you're hundred percent right. You don't want to replicate what you're doing in the real world and just pop in like a, you know, a location where I can go shop or buy something. You know, it, yeah. it again, you're inviting consumers in for this new and exciting experience. And, and it's got to be that or else you're, it's not, it's not going to be authentic. And, and consumers will see right through that. And this community in particular is very vocal about what they like and they don't like. Um, so, uh, had a, uh, so by the way, opening up for, uh, for questions okay. and answers, I, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, you know, uh, one question that just came in is what, you know, outside of the metaverse and, and, and everything, like what's been the most interesting programs that you've launched while you've been at Lego? What's, you know, maybe what, probably the, you know, the most fun or proudest, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> program you've launched. Uh, Besides any of the builds behind you. Oh, that's fine. No, the most, the most fun uh, was uh, creating uh, the uh, go-to-market content plan uh, and producing the content for uh, the Queer Eye Lego set, um, ah. simply. Uh, one, because uh, they're uh, an, an amazing uh, bunch of people uh, and everything from uh, the product development process to how that product came to fruition. Um, it, it was just a fun one to be a part of. Um, and obviously they have a super important mission. So I was proud to be able right. to support that mission through our product. Uh, and that's, those, that's, many, that's awesome. There are many figures are, I can't see they're really, they're over there. yeah, they're it's hard. Over there. yeah. Um, um, that, that's awesome. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, um, and, and it, is that, and that oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and then the other one would be the, I think maybe, um, you know, the, the Snapchat building experience, because I think that was, uh, you know, anytime you're doing a first um, partnering with a platform like that and bringing a sort of uh, a first time technology to uh, an audience that's that big, like the entire Snapchat audience, I think that was uh, super exciting and just incredibly powerful to see what happens when a, a platform like that gets behind a brand and an idea, um, they can pull off some pretty crazy things pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, th th thanks for sharing those. That's, uh, really? that, that's uh, you know, and again, I think that that's, you know, our careers so, so many times and certainly on the brand side, you, you, you get an opportunity to work across so many different, you know, programs and so forth. It's always nice to see like what people are most proud of and it has been the most rewarding yes. for them. Um, cause I think that's an important element of what, what you do, right. For a living yes. it's, it's not just all work, but you're, you're certainly proud of, <laughs> of, you know, and, uh, of a lot of it. Well, of all Listen, if, you, if you can't have fun working in the toy company, then, uh, <laughs> you can't have fun doing a lot of things. <laughs> you're basically, you're basically the, the Tom, Tom Hanks character. Um, uh, no, and, by no means. No, <laughs> I wish where, uh, so another question that just came up is like, mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, if you had your crystal ball out and, and, you know, recognizing that, that, um, you know, uh, it's still very, uh, far off, but like in the next two years, where do you see, you know, where do you see the metaverse as, as, you know, just from a, a, a again, your survey of one, what, yeah. you know, where do you see the metaverse in the next two years? Um, you know, Gosh, I was listening to, uh, uh, like we do on all this, uh, you know, trying to absorb so much information from so many right. different people on this topic. Uh, I'm fascinated around the notion of decentralization uh, and how it naturally becomes centralized. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, so, yeah. you know, if, if you look at uh, the whole premise of NFTs uh, and, you know, the decentralization of the, of the blockchain that supports it, uh, but there is still a very Web2 uh, very centralized uh, gateway with OpenSea and Rarible, um, right. right? And the challenges that creates with that dynamic. So from a, uh, I guess, to use the word, yeah, the philosophical standpoint, I'm very interested to see how those dynamics play out, right? Yeah, in yeah. the world of Roblox, in the world of Minecraft, Animal Crossing, and then in true decentralization of, you know, uh, Decentraland and Sandbox and those other communities, uh, where I think the, the principles of Web3 are coming to life a little bit more. Uh, I'm just very interested to see how all those sort of dynamics play out. Um, there was a great analogy being uh, that I listened to talking very much about, you know, the evolution of the computer, right? And, right. Uh, you know, the computer wasn't Microsoft or Apple, uh, right? And it was sort of a much more decentralized sort of technology that was code, right? right? Uh, and then all of a sudden, 
operating systems came in and you've got what I believe potentially could happen with Web3. Um, so I, as I said, that's that's the thing I'm most interested to see play out. Um, I am always, I'm fascinated uh, with how quickly uh, things have evolved, um, which is both exciting and terrifying uh, <laughs> from a te technology standpoint, uh, right? It felt like, uh, you know, we had heard about Bitcoin and the blockchain for years and years and years and years. And you're like, oh yeah, this is, it's over there. Right, exactly, uh, yeah. And it's just landed. And I have to believe uh, that it's landed uh, quickly and evolved quickly as Web2 has gone into massive decline for all the reasons uh, that we're aware of. So yeah, it's a fascinating space. So fascinating. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And, and you know, Again, as, as we look into the crystal ball, I, I, I don't know exactly where things are going to go. I think that it's, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, you know, we get asked this question a lot, like, well, why do I have to buy land or why, you know, they can just create more of it. Well, within each of these platforms, part of the community, you know, rules and regulations is this is how many plots of land we're going to have and that's it. And so what you're going to see is, you know, some more type of opportunities within specific meta worlds that are going to be for specific genres, right? Or you know certain um, uh, certain genres of uh, or or uh, verticals, if you will. And yeah. I think it's going to be interesting how that all plays out um, in the future because I think that it's you know no different than you've got a website that you go to for fashion news or that you go to for sports news. I think it may you know kind of iterate along those lines. So it's going to be interesting yeah. to see. Um, yeah. Uh, and we had one last question and I'll answer this one is, uh, where can someone go to get involved in web three and metaverse groups, content, people to follow? I'm in LA and want to dive in. Come on in, man. The water's yeah. Warm. The water's warm. <laughs> There's plenty man, of there, content out there. Plenty of content. There is, there is so much, uh, there is so, so much. I think, uh, what I've noticed is there is, listen, there's a lot of introductory content, um, yeah. and that anyone is, that is uh, a digital native. I think a lot of that introductory content is obvious, like all things, right? I used to remember people being like, well, how, how do I get into social media advertising? Like, how, how do I understand how it works? The best way to do it is throw a hundred bucks in there and get involved, right? So so yeah. build out your own experience, right? Join one of these uh, these metaverses and, and see for yourself because uh, without it, uh, there's only so much that reading <laughs> can do for you right. unless you exactly. truly experience. I would also say, we talked about this before, uh, speak to a 13 year old kid or a, a, a young, a young kid, uh, and watch how, uh, they communicate with their friends. Uh, and you'll start understanding, uh, why these virtual worlds are going to be so important. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you're absolutely right though. I, I would say the, the, the best way is just to jump in, go yeah. into Decentraland, go into Sandbox right now. Um, they're in season two and, and see what it's all about. And there we're getting the, uh, the, the hook. Well, James, hunt, thanks so much. <laughs> James, thanks so much for your time today and, and joining no us. Worries. It was really, it was a great conversation and I, I appreciate it.